So we want to talk about area between a graph of a function that is above x above and on x axis and two point on the x axis basically area and travel between them. Uh, what do I mean? Let's say if a uh, first point is right here and it's one, let's see one, and then second point D, right now a, a one and D are the same point. So you don't see any area, right? And so the next thing that I wanna do is I want to uh, basically um, move D a little further. And you can see there is a little area over here. Uh, one question, how do I compute this area, right? So uh, right now I'm saying D is between what? D is between, so we want to annotate and D is between one and three. And the area seems like this width right here, which is D minus one times that height, which is two. So the area is two times one, right? And, and then what happens if D is not, uh, D actually goes and uh, goes. And so because we found the formula, as D goes and goes, basically um, uh, this value uh, is going to, and the, the, fun, the value that we found was related to basically the uh, D as a variable rather than a point. And it's going to basically, it's going to help us to find the area of that rectangle as D grows for a while. But let's see, is it going to be forever that way? Let's see, let's see. Uh, it's, it's going and growing, and then it's not growing anymore when the full area is achieved right here. If D is bigger than three, then area cannot uh, go anymore because the uh, function becomes zero. So here I'm going to write it down. If D is bigger than three, the area is just going to be two times two, which and three minus one is two, and so it's four. Uh, and what if if area uh, was less than uh, one over here? Then there won't be anything entrapped between a and one, basically. So you will get zero. D is less than. Um, this wasn't too bad. Uh, let's see if um, is it going to be always uh, this this way. Oh, one thing before moving on. Uh, I'm putting in different different pieces. So it le looks like. If I plug in variable D, then I get an output, right? So it looks like a, a piecewise defined function. I'm, I'm calling it capital F of D. And this is turn out, this turns out to be very important for um, probability and stats, for a bunch of physics problem, for a bunch of uh, a, a economics problem and so on and so forth. But I mean, I wrote as f of t, but you can always switch it into, let's say f of x. And if I write f of x, I replace d by x everywhere. So zero, if x is less than y equal to one, it's two times x minus one, if x is between one and three and is equal to four, if x is bigger than equal to uh, three. Now, um, what happens if the shape of the function is a little different? And I'm, I'm doing the, uh, basically for this part, I'm just um, doing piecewise defined functions. Uh, throughout the course, we, we do more than that, basically. Now, in here, there is a function, and it's, again, above or over x-axis. And I want to find between two x values, what is the value of this uh, function, basically, of the um, area uh, entrapped in this function. So first thing first, let's find out what this function is. And here, the function is, uh, look at this line, um, anywhere between outside the one and five, uh, the function is zero. 
x less than one and uh, or x bigger than equal to five. Now between one and three, x is this line with the slope one and it goes through point one and zero right there. So it's basically x minus one. And then x between three and five is just the constant value two. Now, uh, let's take a look at the area. If I'm looking at the area, look, 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 there we go. For a while, when, um, when D is between, wait, when D is between, one more time, when D is between one and three, the area is going to be area of this um, triangle. How do I compute the area of triangle? Width times height. Oh, but width depends on D. Right now it's sitting on, on actually two, but you know that uh, the width actually depends on the D. D may not be two um, uh, all the time. So it was just that one incident that D was two. Let's put this right over here, um, back to drawing board. And I'm gonna erase this. Um, and that, and do this again. There we go. So this height is going to, it's going to depend on D and, and it's like D and the X of this point is D and X of that point is one. So it's going to be D minus one. And this height depends on uh, that actually it sits on the function. So it's equal to F of D, F of D. And so for D uh, between one and three, F of D is uh, D minus one. That's just, so that's D minus one. So between one and three, this area is going to be one to power two, because it's D minus one height, D minus one width divided by two area of the triangle. So what happens if I have D between uh, three and five? And so let's try that now. Um, let's see what happens, right? Um, so I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, look at that. Uh, what just happened? Um, first of all, you pass the entire place that, that the biggest triangle that you could have made. So you pass this area, this triangle basically. And this triangle, uh, and this is three. So it's three minus one times two divided by two. That triangle was just four, and I'm oh, sorry, two. And then you have this rectangle sitting here, which is basically D minus three, times the height is the area of that rectangle. So it makes makes two pieces this time around. And as, as, as you look at it, you see that, oh, this is going to be uh, the case every time. So it's a low, uh, you can tell that it's uh, just growing by the, uh, that rectangle. And then you, after, after five, basically, the area is going to stay as, so D bigger than five. Oh, I have an error over there. So let's make that right. This was five. And D bigger than equal to five makes this uh, uh, the biggest area that you can get. Which, what is that? Let's go over here. The biggest area you can get is the area of that rectangle or triangle, which is two, plus the area of the biggest um, uh, rectangle over there, which is going to be again, two times two plus, uh, and it's going to be right here, right? So the multiple ways of doing that, you can also use the, um, so this uh, rectangle plus the, uh, oh, sorry. This rectangle plus this triangle, uh, triangle is two, the rectangle is going to be 
four. So after five, you get uh, six. And again, if D was before that, D would be zero. Now, um, uh, the entire thing is that, again, we're saying that this is an area function because for every D you give me on the number line, I sort of find a, an area for you. Um, and so I can actually either write it as f of t or I can write it as f of x to be uh, zero when x is less than equal to one, x minus one to power two divided by two is x is between one and three. And then um, what else is left? Um, oops, sorry. And then I will have uh, uh, two plus two times d my x minus three if x is between three and five and so on. And then we have six if x is written a little bit nicer. It didn't work out very well. Let's put it over here quickly. Um, so what I said is f of x zero, x less than equal to one. Uh, it's x minus one to power two divided by two is x between one and three. And it's two plus two times x minus two, x between three and five. And then it's equal to six, x can two. And so this is called area function. Again, um, I talked about it in physics and, and probably team stat and a whole lot of areas, this area function is important. Um, and um, at this point, it's the easiest one that we can do are these piecewise defined functions that are pieces of lines, basically. And when we go further, we gain more with it.